Minasan, konnichiwa. So what have I got for you today? Well, I have the Razer Black Widow Ultimate Stealth 2014 Edition Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. And I kind of wish that instead of just the same name, but 2013 or 2014, they would just kind of switch it up a bit. Because sometimes like whatever you get confused and you just click and buy the wrong one, but I'm sure you will do your research before you buy, right? So what are some of the main features? Well, this looks quite tall actually. It comes with Razer's own mechanical switches. And uh, Razer so far, I believe, has uh, have two. So one is the green switch, which is clicky and tactile, so you'll feel the bump, and most resembles the blue switch, the Cherry Mix Blues, in the 50 gram actuation and the feel and stuff. And the orange switch, which it features in this keyboard, has a more tactile, which is bumpy, and it's more silent. However, I tested it against Cherry Mix Browns, and I believe that the when you bottom out, it is louder than the browns, but sometimes it's like, I'm hearing too many switches, and I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> So why don't we take a closer look inside. Here's everything that comes in the box. The keyboard itself, which I will go over in more detail in just a bit, but first let's take a look at the documentation. Let me go ahead and open this up. I do like the packaging. It's very env environmentally friendly since it's not plastic, it's paper. And let's take a look at what you get. You get a quick start guide. Now I don't know if this is just the version I got, but I did not enjoy that it didn't show me how to uh, record macro on the fly. I had to test that out myself. So fun. <laughs> but I'll show you in the software portion exactly how to do it so you'll know. And inside the quick start guide, you want to look at the Razer Synapse 2.0, which is Razer's cloud-based software. And you need to download that. You actually need to register. You didn't need to do that like maybe a year ago, but you do need to do that now, give them a valid email address and so on and so forth. I kind of like software that's a lot more straightforward. Like you just download it and you use it. <laughs> but I guess this is fine since, um can store a lot more information. So, and just shows you how to plug everything in and that's it. What else? You always get this, by the way. Congratula congratulations, there is no turning back. I think you signed over your soul. Okay, and what else? Important product information guide. Take a look at that. I don't really think anyone does, but for, you know, liability, uh, warranty and all that, well, you might check that out. There's that, and of course, uh, two snake badges, or stickers, yes. Kinda like that, the three-headed snake, or I think that's what it is. Now, onto the actual keyboard. Now, before I light up this keyboard, I'd like to show you some of its other features. For example, it is a standard QWERTY layout. You do get a full numpad, which is something I really like, and you get the home end buttons and the directional pad all separate, which is great because then I don't have to like use function to access any of the other commands. Now, here is the function key that gives you a set of alternate commands such as volume, multimedia, as well as your F9 M key, macro on the fly record, and I'll show you how to do that once I light it up and with the software. And the G key, game mode key, and then your LED from lightest to brightest. And of course, a sleep one. Actually, I don't see the sleep function uh, key a lot on most keyboard so that's that's new for this one in particular and you also get a set of five macro keys dedicated macro keys and one thing I want to mention is that this is a fully programmable keyboard which is really nice for those of you who don't use your mouse as much for um, macros but instead prefer to use like a keyboard for example I use the mouse but I believe this could come in handy. For example, in World of Warcraft, I want to, uh, you know, have uh, buff spells and just use one button to get to those buff spells because on the G600 mouse, I generally don't really pay attention to the buttons after six. <laughs> so after row two. Anyway, um, and it also comes with this matte finish and it is plastic, it's not rubberized, and the reason for matte is because it doesn't really pick up fingerprints. I mean, it does if you have like oily butt fingers like I do. <laughs> that sounded wrong, but I just have really oily fingers, probably because I eat a lot of oily stuff, but here you go. It kind of just, you know, like disappears a little bit, like uh, magic, ah. I know some of you are thinking, don't touch that keyboard, but you know what? It's my video. <laughs> and um, also, I wanted to go over the um, cable. So you get this thick braided cable right here. It's cloth braided, so it's very sturdy, which I like. And when you clean it up, it bends well. 
Now onto the actual connectors. You get two USB, I believe it's 2.0 connectors, and it's uh, gold plated, which is always awesome. One's for power, the other is for the pass through on the other side of the keyboard, which I will show you in a bit. You also get pass through, pass -through connectors for your headphone and mic jacks in case you want to plug in a headset via analog. Now let me go ahead and turn this over here. So you will notice the pass-through USB. I believe this is also a USB 2.0 connector and headphone and mic jacks. Am I pointing to the right one? Yes, headphone and mic jacks. What else? Let's turn it around to the bottom. One moment. Here we are. So you get these rubberized feet in uh, what is it, five corners of the keyboard and it's so it stays in place when you are gaming and this is actually quite hef hefty keyboard I believe it weighs in at like 3.3 pounds so that shouldn't really happen anyway unless you're like Hulk Rage <laughs> but I hope you don't do that to your keyboard anyway um, and oh got some dust on here um, you do get angled feet I do like it when there are feet on the uh, front of the keyboard too and I believe on a uh, negative slope it's might actually be better for your hands because I don't like these feet because I get hand strain with my wrist pad so I prefer it to just be flat but I would like to try it with the feet up in this area now I believe that's it for the back you know what I would have liked to see uh, channels for me to organize the cables yes channels we're going to take a closer look at the orange mechanical switches of Razer and I want to mention that I don't have the wire key puller yet so we're going to use this plastic one in the meantime. Alrighty, so don't hate. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get down to pulling them keys. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the D key. One second, this is a really weird angle for me to pull the key out. There we go, wiggle wiggle. Now there is the uh, I want to say Cherry MX so badly, but this is the Razor Orange key. You'll feel the bump, um, and it's also supposed to be silent. It is relatively silent when you um, do not bottom out, but for typists like me, I bottom out all the time. And individually backlit keys, as you can see with the LED. Now, let me tilt this just a little bit. It also comes with a uh, green backplate, so like the TK series and the Rapid Eye, you'll get a lot more um, LED action going on. Now, just like the browns and reds, it has 40, oh, <laughs> it comes with 45 gram actuation. Now, here's a sound test. Bottom me out. Eh. And then let me do spider fingers so you have a better idea. Now, one thing about these uh, key switches, uh, keys, is that they don't all sound alike. I don't know if you have experiences yourself. For example, let's listen to the IN7. One moment. Slightly. But I don't think uh, some of you will mind because I personally don't try to listen to exactly what every key sounds like. When I'm typing so fast, they all sound the same to me. But uh, here you have it, a closer look at the orange switch. It's my favorite part, the LED part, yay. So I'm just gonna show you how bright this keyboard gets. Right now it's in the off mode. And there's actually, by the way, using the function key, one more time, there's actually f like 15 levels of lighting. So there's no point in going through all of them. So I'm just gonna hold function and hold down the brightness key, okay? So function. Wow, check that baby out. But if you do want to see the individual lighting modes, I can show you too. Eventually, too off. That's quite a bit, folks. And one more time. Wow. <laughs> and I really, really enjoy the how the green back plate really accents the green LEDs. And it just looks gorgeous. It's like you're in a beautiful green forest. Or you just ran into a nuclear dump. That too. Alrighty, now uh, moving right along, I did want to show you the uh, Windows lock key, so G key right here, and you'll know if you're in Windows lock when you see that um, light right there. And let's turn it off, and how to record macro on the fly. Now you can only use the macro on the fly if you have the software installed, which makes a lot of sense. Joe's laptop doesn't have it, but my PC that I tested this keyboard on does. 
but I'll show you a little bit about how it looks like. So you press function F9, and this should be solid, by the way, the red MLED. And then you just type in your macro. Then you press function and F9 once more, and this should start blinking. And when it starts blinking, you, you press any key, except for the function key, of course, to set the macro. Let's say you want an M3 or you want a Q, and boom, it's done. And I think it's really great when you are in-game and you really need a macro like right then and there. It's, it's just easy. You don't have to open up the software in order to make that macro, so plus. Here's the pulsating effect on the keyboard. I had to actually unplug it from Joe's laptop and run to my own PC to um, change the lighting in the software. That is not something I like about this uh, keyboard, which is the software. And I wish it was just more fluid, and I'll show you in just a bit what I mean. And so basically, I think it would have been nice if they used another one of these F keys with the function key to change the lighting. Even though there's only two modes, static and pulsing, it would have been nice instead of having to open up my software to do that. Now, here's another key that's interesting to me. This one right here. Right here. It looks kind of like a page with a little uh, writing on there, but you know, like straight lines for writing. This is the context key. I don't really see it on gaming keyboards. In fact, it's new to me on this one. And basically, it acts as your mouse right click. So we tried recording the Razer software using OBS, but it didn't work. It worked for Logitech, but not for Razer. So hopefully in the future, it won't be an issue with other software. We had to print screen pretty much everything I talked about. <laughs> so that's why you're just going to see a series of images while I talk about it. And hopefully, you'll understand what I'm saying. Now, here's a look at the software. So you have keyboard and macros. You can make macros here, or you can make them by clicking into the keys. For example, like Q, and you can choose the alternate commands, uh, like Windows shortcuts, multimedia, launch a program, or just go straight into macro. You just click record. We're going to just press Q or QWERTY. Okay, let's say QWERTY. Stop and save. So right now, Q has macro QWERTY. And we're going to go ahead and take this in here and press Q. And look at that, it types out QWERTY, very nice. Alrighty, if you want to delete a macro, by the way, this is what I don't like. You can't delete or rename the macro. For example, if I go into it, right click, nothing happens, you can only add it here. If you want to delete a macro, you have to go into the macros, click on the macro that you want to delete, hit the trash can, and yes, and it is gone. There's also some other options here. You could also add a macro here, record, same thing. You could also record exact delay you want, which could be very useful, like I said, especially for like World of Warcraft. I think I'm gonna start using buffs and uh, just have a macro that has delay for like four, three or four spells and put it on one of the macro keys. And if you wanna create a new profile, very simple enough. I have like three that I created, but you just click add. Change the profile name to new or something. And by the way, you don't need to save this. You just type it and it's like, it's suddenly saved as new. Cause it's like really strange. Some parts of the software you have to save and some parts you don't have to. And for profile, you can also choose to delete your profile. We're gonna go back to Joanne's profile. Actually, there's an easier way to switch your profile. For some reason, it didn't work for me yesterday, but it's working for me now. So you see the shortcut, function plus zero is Joanne's profile. Now profile one is function plus one. So we're gonna go back to Joanne's profile. I'm gonna press function, one and there i'm on profile one and then when i press the other function and the other keys i go to the other profile so what else let's go into lighting so you could just click pulsate and no need to click save or anything your keyboard will automatically stay as pulsating even when you disconnect it but we're going to keep it on bright and you could change the brightness levels in here but I think it's just easier to use the function key and the provided LED intensity keys. Oh, you can also switch all device lighting to off when display is turned off. And there's a gaming mode, which is basically just if I do function F10, it'll be on. And that means the Windows key is locked. So, oh, by the way, when you're in gaming mode, you can choose to disable the Windows key as well as Alt4 and Alt Tab. So if you do use those uh, combination keys, it could be very, very useful. Now I'm going to turn this off again. Now uh, let's go back to customize. I want to show you how the uh, macro works. So I'm going to press F function key and F9 and the red LED indicator on the keyboard right here should be static. Now I'm going to type in 
QR QWERTY, and then function F9 again, and this little button on the keyboard is blinking, slow blinking, by the way. And then I want to set it to M3, and we're going to go on to uh, this page again, and we're going to type M3. What? Magical! Alrighty. <laughs> Alright, one more thing is this link program. It could actually be quite useful. So you can link a profile to a certain game. So once you open up the game, it'll go to the profile. And also up here, you could check for updates, submit feedback, and all that good stuff. And I guess, oh, uh, what is this? Ah, your software is up to date. We'll periodically check for new updates to ensure your gaming experience is optimized. Very cool. So there you have it. This is the ending of the software tutorial. It's that time again, pros and cons with Joanne on Joanne Tech Lover. Yes. So let me start off with pros. I do like that this is a full-size keyboard. It has this uh, matte finish to it. Would have liked that it was like more rubberized, soft touch. I personally like that. Not everybody does though. And I also like that there are dedicated macro keys, five of them, in addition to this keyboard being fully programmable, minus the function button right here. And I do love that they have the green back plate, so it really illuminates the LEDs. And come on, 15 LED light settings. That's a lot of options to choose from. So I I am loving this part of it. Any other pros? Yes, I do like the USB pass-through and the uh, analog connection for your headset uh, pass-through on this side of the keyboard. Let's see if there are other pros. Um, of course, sturdy keyboard uh, and gold-plated USB contacts. Now on to the cons. Now the cons of this keyboard, not too many, but one of them is a big one, which is the software. I wish it was more user-friendly. Like I really had to try out different combinations to see what worked. For example, um, what, uh, how do you create a new macro? Um, um, how do you change the name of your profile or macro? You know, things like that. It could have been way easier if there were like a list of instructions telling you what to do or just more user-friendly, like click, save, done. Yes, <laughs> that's what I really like about Logitech software. It's just easy to use. What else would have liked that they had a function key up here for changing the lighting effects from pulsing to static. Really is kind of a pain to have to go into the software every time to go ahead and change that. Now I try to see if there was like a lighting option that I could set to one of the keys, you know, um, as a macro, but um, no such thing. <laughs> I guess that's it for the major cons of this keyboard. And I did want to show you, I mean, tell you about my experience with the keys. So I would say it is a difference between browns for the tactile, the reds for the responsiveness, and the blacks for the bottoming out sound. So that is the impression that I get from the orange mechanical switches from Razer. That wraps up the video on this Razer Black Widow Ultimate Stealth 2014 mechanical gaming keyboard featuring Razer's own mechanical switches. These are the orange, remember, they also come in green. I don't know for this specific keyboard, but Razer also makes green switches. Um, now, I hope that you found it informative. Uh, enjoyable and you learn something from it because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to share my experiences, hopefully teach you a thing or two if you didn't already know. But you can also teach me a thing or two if I forgot to mention something <laughs> or I just didn't know about it. Anyway, um, please follow me on social media, Joanne Tech Lover on uh, Facebook fan page, Joanne Food Lover on Twitter, as well as twitch.tv slash whaletune where I game with Tim weekly. Um, our main game is World of Warcraft. I, it's so freaking addicting. We just got my uh, Pandera Mage to level 85, trying to get to 90 so we can raid. That's like a whole new ballpark, but I will go into that like possibly in a vlog or something like that. And finally, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like, and comment because I do love hearing from you. I love interacting with you guys. And it's just great to learn, you know, just to, you know, get the interaction cycle going. <laughs> Alrighty, um, there is uh, one more thing is please help donate so that you can help fund this channel, help me expand so I can start building PCs because I cannot afford to at the moment and I would love to show you different PC builds as well as feed this techie. That's the honest truth there. <laughs> um, I guess that's all that's left to say is sayonara, daisuke.